Hey, how's it going? One of the reasons why I just continued to go to Lonnie's house, the guy that I talked about in, in my last video, well, not the last video, but the video before my last video, was because throughout most of my life, I was looking for some sort of a father figure. Now, I was never attracted to Lonnie. I was never interested in Lonnie in any sort of romantic way at all. But I liked his mind. I respected his mind. I respected the way that he was able to memorize things. I respected how much knowledge he seemed to have. And I would just hope that that would rub off on me somehow. Most of my attractions to guys has not been, has not actually been who I want to be with. It was more about what I wanted to be like. Much of it was about trying to connect to my masculinity. What is it to be a man? What does it mean? And I'd always think that, well, if I get with uh, someone who is masculine, who, who is someone who I would like to be like, then maybe it will rub off on me. I always had a thing for guys who were big, who were heavy, and didn't care what society thinks of them. Uh, you know, especially people who just don't give a shit what other people think of them. But, you know, you find that very often with people who are heavy, who carry it with pride. People who are big, who carry it with pride. You usually find that, that attitude along with it. And so those two things together always really were something I found attractive. I used to hang out a lot at biker bars when I was in my 20s. Biker bars, I, I would just sit on the sideline watching the way that people interact, hoping that maybe some of that might rub off on me. Now, now I'm not going to say that this is what all gay people deal with or have or that it's even relatable by a number of gay people, other gay people. I don't think a lot of gay people had some of the things that were involved with the way that I was raised. Uh, one of the things that uh, happened in Sunday school was, uh, there was this time they, they separated the boys from the girls and then taught the boys they, I can't remember what part of the Bible it's in, but uh, there's some point where one of the, the male characters looked at a woman naked who was, I, I, think, she, I think she was showering under a, 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 a waterfall or something. And they wanted to, to stop, you know, stop the story and then just talk about how wrong it is, how sinful it is to have the desire to look at women naked. And then at the end of that presentation, they, they tested the kids on it. They tested every all the boys on it. And I don't know, that's, that's kind of fucked up. And then, of course, there were ways that I was raised by my mother that was quite different than the way my brother was raised. My brother, at really early ages, had massive curiosities about women's bodies. And he did some exploring. And... One time, my brother got caught exploring with a little girl, you know, when he was little, obviously, as well. And uh, my mom wanted him punished. And uh, my dad, who was still around at the time, who died when I was four, didn't really get to know him, but uh, my dad was supposed to punish him. And, and so they made the noises as if he was being physically punished, but then told my brother, you know, I don't think what you did was wrong. And so, you know, they, the way that I was raised by my mother and grandmother was to try to make sure that I don't turn out bad like my brother. So that goes into this picture as well. I was raised to think that, you know, having those kinds of curiosities was bad. I mean, for all these years, even in recent years, Every time my brother will talk about something that he thinks is attractive about women, my mother treats him as if he's saying something horrible. And then, of course, the public school system, you know, had a number of feminist things in it that, you know, have the same sorts of messages that, oh, uh, 
you know, uh, looking at women that way, you know, is, is degrading and so on and so forth. So I get it from church, I get it from school, and I get it from home. Well, that must be wrong. Well, what's left? Looking at guys. And then I didn't have a father, so I wanted a father figure. I wanted someone that I could somehow look up to, to bounce ideas back and forth as to, you know, what is it to be a man? What does it mean? So, you know, honestly, for myself, there may be, as long as it wasn't based on religious views, which most of these things are, unfortunately, I might have been able to benefit in some way from gay conversion therapy. It wasn't just the thing of me not being attracted to women in, in such ways, it's that I felt it was wrong to be attracted to women in such ways. I, I didn't know what a vagina looked like until I was in my 20s looking at, you know, seeing pictures. I didn't let myself look at them because I thought it was wrong. So I, I'm not saying that being gay is a mental disorder, but I think there are some people who are gay who may not have been if they had been raised differently. I think I might have been bi had I have been raised differently. Who knows, maybe, maybe I wouldn't have been gay at all if I, you know, maybe I wouldn't have had the attractions to men at all if, if, if I would have had more of an idea of what it is to be a guy. What things eventually turned into after I got rejected so many times by guys who were heavy, who carried it with pride, who actually enjoyed being heavy, enjoyed having a big build, after getting rejected so many times because I didn't also have a big build, I turned my sexuality into self-sexuality. There are some people who consider those who are trans, uh, or some people who are trans, to have autogynophilia. Well, I think with me, I had some sort of, I don't know what it would be called, uh, auto-obesophilia? <laughs> I... There was a point where I sort of gave up on the idea of being with anyone. I, I, I replaced it with becoming what it is that I was initially attracted to, or what I looked up to. And then, of course, I eventually learned that it was extremely stupid to purposely make myself heavy, and learning about all the negative sides to being heavy. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I've felt that, you know, I'm not really dating material. Honestly, my, my sexuality at this point is just so messed up, I don't really know what it is anymore. I've always been a bit confused about it, but now I just, I just don't know what it is. And I don't know if there's anyone who can relate with it. And I don't know if any sort of therapist will help me with these things. It's also why I really don't want, you know, when I eventually do get a therapist, I don't want a religious therapist. I want someone who, I mean, at least not a, a Bible-based religious therapist. If, they, if they're, you know, pagan or something like that, you know, fine. Yeah, religion has really fucked me up. It's really done a number on me. I'm thankful that there were enough good things about the way I was raised that I didn't turn out to be someone that did really unfortunate things that would land me in prison or something. I'm glad that I've been someone who questions my own motives, that I try to figure out who I am, that I try to figure this stuff out, that I'm a bit introverted. Because if I didn't have that sense, man, yeah, I, I would probably be in prison now. I probably would have done some things that uh, would have considered me psychotic. But I, I think that if someone was to want to seek out conversion therapy, they should be able to get it. Now, I don't think, I don't think it should be able to be based on religion. But that's the problem here. How could, how on a legal side could someone block only the religious way of doing conversion therapy? How legally could that work? I'm not seeing a way that could be done. Is, is it legally possible to, to block any sort of religious side of anything from therapy 
at all, just generally with therapy? Is there a legal route to blocking religious, uh, what's the right word, uh, just religious methodology in therapy in general? I don't think so. But maybe I'm wrong. The main thing that I don't think should ever be pushed forth is that is this idea that being gay is wrong. Because it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt anyone. It's not hurting anything. So many gay people have been able to live uh, productive, very happy lives. I don't know, I don't think it should be considered a mental disorder. But I think, you know, it would be nice if people wanted to further investigate their own sexuality and, and find out if it's really based off of just what they are from, from you know, from the base of them or whether it's something that was a result of their upbringing, situations they were in. I think people should be able to, to get, to, to research that and not just have to do all the research on their own. Anyway. Ooh.